In 2019, LG came out with the UM series, followed up in 2020 by the UN series. Well, now we're in 2021. This is the UP series. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys a 43 inch UP 7000. Now, a lot of people ask me, why do I go with the 43 inch TVs? You should be reviewing 50 inch and 65s because that's what the average person has. Well, reality of it is, is the videos that I create are really designed to show you guys the features. And if you really want to see the picture quality, then I advise you go to your local store. Now the content can vary from model to model, but this one is basically going to have all the features of the bigger sets. Now I will start off with a few things. First of all, this is a 60 Hertz panel, but it has 120 Hertz motion that smooths out those action scenes. But when it comes to gaming, it's still a 60 Hertz panel. The second thing I want to tell you guys is that this is an IPS panel. And the reason I like IPS is because it has better colors and better viewing angles. But if you go to the 50 inch, you can get a VA panel. However, if you go with a 55 inch or a 65 inch, you're going to get IPS panels as well. But if you're a gamer, you might want to get the 50 inch. That's up to you. So on this video, we're going to get it out of the box. I'm going to show you guys some demos and we'll see what this TV set does for the low price. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. In the box, you get the left and right feet, the instruction manual that comes with a power cable, and you get the full remote control that has the number pad, you have some hotkeys, and you have controls for DVD players or any type of media streaming service. To mount the feet on the bottom of the TV set is very easy. There's a left on the television set, and there's a left on the foot. All you need to do is go ahead and put it in place and screw it in with the provided screws. So when it comes to the LG UP7000, even though it's an IPS panel, it actually has really good contrast ratios. Now I will tell you it does have 4K upscaling and it is direct lit with the backlights. Now as far as picture profiles, it does support your HDR10 and HLG, but uh, let's take a closer look. When you get this TV set, it has some plastic on the top here that you just want to go ahead and peel off. And you're going to find some tape around the edges right here. And just in case you wonder, here's the energy savings guide. On the back of it, you're going to find two HDMI's and one USB. And I will tell you, one of these is HDMI 2.1 with eARC, so it is good for audio pass-through. And that's for 7.1 audio pass-through, not for 120 hertz gaming. There's a coaxial input as well as a fiber optic and network input. And you can easily mount it on the wall with the 300 by 300 millimeter holes right here for a wall mount bracket. So I need to be honest with you guys. So I did a video on the Samsung TU7000 and you guys were like, why did they go to two HDMI inputs? Two HDMI's and one of them is for ARC for sound bars as well as any type of uh, ARC control device. Well, the same thing happened here, two HDMI inputs. So I think that's a bad move considering that People are now using different kinds of streaming boxes like the Roku's, the Apple TV's, the cable boxes, satellite boxes. Now with two inputs, it's going to really limit what you hook up to this TV set. So I really think it's a push to get you to go to a more advanced model that has more inputs. Now I made a video on this little adapter from O-Ray and uh, this allows you to have four inputs using one. So in other words, you can take one of these inputs, plug this in, and now you can have four, and it does support the full capabilities of the TV set, which is 4K 60 Hertz. But uh, let's keep going with the video. So there's a couple of different ways you can set up this television set. One, when you first turn it on, you can use the LG remote control, but I prefer to use the LG ThinQ application. You can use the iPhone to get the LG ThinQ application, or you can use the Android device like this one right here. And all you need to do is just download the ThinQ application and scan the barcode. Once everything is set up with the ThinQ application, you can connect it to your Alexa system or Google system. But keep in mind, this television set does not have voice command built in. Now take a look at the design. It's got a thin black bezel that goes all the way around the screen. Now when you look at the feet, they look like brushed aluminum. And then if you go over here to the center, you have the LG logo. Now underneath here, there's a little press button. And if you press it, you get some controls on the screen. Take a look at the side view. You can see that it's a little bit bigger in the back due to that this is a direct lit television set. 
and that the back of it has a little bit of bump as well. And in my opinion, this TV set is a lot more stable than last year's model as far as the way the legs and the design is. The TV is powered by WebOS 6.0, which has a new black interface, which make it very easy to use. Also, if you go over here, you have a function called Home Dashboard. Under Home Dashboard, you can see everything that's connected to the television set. And you can see right there, it does support AirPlay, SoundShare, and I do have a USB thumb drive plugged in. And it also shows the status of the audio. Now, if you have other TVs or other devices connected to your LG cloud, you can click right here and find the different devices like televisions as well as refrigerators or anything that's connected to the LG ThinQ system. Now, if you need to rename any of your inputs, you can hit the ellipses at the top. You can press edit, edit inputs. And with this full keyboard, you can label this to be anything you want. On the home screen, you have LG channels that's available in some regions, but it allows you to have like some type of TV content that streams off the internet. Over here, we have an app store, and it's grouped under feature, entertainment, game, news, and education. Another thing I wanna point out is that LG does not require a login to be able to download apps. Now, if you're a big sports fan here in the US, I know it works for sure, there's a sports update alert. So if you go here, you can add your favorite teams, and you can see there's different genres like NFL, NHL, and this allows you to add all your favorite teams to a list. And then whenever the games are on, it can show you all the updates of that team. This TV set does have a web browser built in, so you can use the internet. Keep in mind that this remote control is not gonna really get you through those screens really good. You can see I'm inching around just by pressing and holding it. And if I wanna click on something, I'll press okay in the center of the remote control. But if you're trying to watch any type of movies or anything like that, I don't expect it to work good. Just want to show you guys that it does have a built-in web browser. And the last thing I'll show you guys on this list besides doing edits, you can go in here and you have a media player. And if I was to hit play on one of these videos on here, some videos will not play. So there's a list of different ones that does work. Like for example, this is an MP4, it works fine. And if you go down to the bottom here, you can see there's subtitles that you can have, rotation, you can rewind, repeat all, as well as going over here to options, and you can change the playback speed. So those are some of the different things you can do with the Web OS 6.0. Now we're gonna do some video tests, and some people said that, hey, I need you guys to use a real person in your video so I can get an idea of the skin tones. And I have a few clips here to show you guys. So here we have a girl in the forest. You can see the black of her hair. You can see her skin tones of her face. And you can also see the orange shirt that she has on. And I'm gonna tell you that this TV set is performing so much better than I thought it would. Here's another example for you guys. This is a boxer basically shadow boxing at the camera. And you can see that his gloves are red and there's a little bokeh in the background, but overall the skin tones look really good. Here's another example of some skin tones. Again, she has a beautiful face and some curly hair. Another example of a girl smiling on the streets with the sun behind her. And again, these are flesh tones that you guys were asking about. And this is a good test because it shows the black level of their jackets and the whiteness of the snow. And again, beautiful animal, skin tones. Before I end this particular segment, I wanna show you guys something real quick. On the right hand side, I have the Samsung Q60A, which is a $600 television set. And on the left, we have the LG UP7000. Now, first of all, this is in standard mode. So you can notice that the Samsung is a much brighter screen and this is not what we're trying to debate. We're trying to debate the black levels in the IPS panel. So what I'm gonna do is go over to the Samsung and just show you guys the different picture modes. Now, I will also point out that you can go into the advanced picture settings and adjust this, but I have it at factory settings. So right now we're in standard mode, that's natural mode, movie mode, filmmaker mode, dynamic, and back to standard. Now we're gonna take a look at the UP7000 from LG. So what you see right now is in the standard mode. Here we have the auto power save mode, the cinema mode, sports mode, gaming mode, filmmaker mode, expert brightness, expert darkness, and vivid. The one thing that's really stand out to me is that the Samsung does have more details, 
but the black levels on this one are more convincing to me. But, but you guys leave a comment below and tell me what you think, the LG IPS or the Samsung V8. I'm here to tell you guys that this is not a sponsored video, but what do you guys think? Pretty impressive for 329 US dollars. Now it also looked good if you hook it up to a computer. Here's an example of Photoshop. You can see you can go here, go through all the different settings at the top. Here's another example using Microsoft Publisher. And you can go in here again, use the TV set as a monitor to create different publications that you can share with your family. And in my opinion, it's also a great monitor to use for PowerPoint. And you can create different type of presentations for your business, school, or anywhere you need to make a presentation. And you can see it makes a great computer monitor and it will support up to 4K 60 frames per second, assuming that you have a video card that supports it. Now let's do a input lag test and we can play some games. So first test we're gonna do is I have the TV set in standard picture mode. Let's see what we get. So it looks like about 51.4 milliseconds. And that's pretty average for a TV set because it's not in gaming mode. But let's now put it into gaming mode and see what we get. And the lag is pretty good. It dropped down to about 10.7 milliseconds. And that's gonna make your response time so much faster whenever you plan any kind of action game. So I would tell you the gaming experience on this TV set is really good considering that it is a 4K 60 Hertz screen. Now, a lot of people always saying on the box, I seen that it said 120 Hertz, but keep in mind that is motion. This is a 60 Hertz 8-bit panel. So you're not gonna get too much more than that. Also, whenever you go into the settings, I looked and see if you can do 1440 gaming at 120 Hertz. Didn't see any options, nor do I have a console that will allow you to switch over to that automatically. Another thing I want to tell you guys is that this TV set does support Apple AirPlay in the United States. And in addition to that, if you have the HomeKit ecosystem, it will connect to that as well and allow you to use Siri to turn the TV set off and on. Now, if you have an Android device, it doesn't have an ecosystem. However, you can do screen mirroring and share your screen with this particular TV set. Other than that, only gripes I had about this TV set is the construction of it is a little bit, you know, on the cheaper side and you only get that two HDMI inputs. But I'm gonna tell you, when it comes to picture quality, it performed so much better than I thought. However, if you guys wanna check it out, you feel free to go look at reviews and see what other people think, but I'll leave all those links in the comments below. I'm Tech Steve, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.
next to you.